Hey everyone, this is AJ. I'm coming to you just uh, giving you an update on my transition journey. Um, today was a hard day. Um, today I had to have my annual uh, mammogram and sonogram. Um, and um, every year, this time, I just get so sad and um, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Um, never before have I felt as much dysphoria for these things um, that I felt today. Uh, it is real. And I don't like using that term too much, um, but dysphoria is real. Um, I have never ever connected to or liked having breasts at all. Um, ever since my initial puberty, my first puberty, um, because you know I'm on testosterone, so I'm going through puberty again. Um, but my initial puberty as a young child, nothing ever happened right for me. Like when my breast or these breasts were developing, um, only one came in. The other one came like 10 months later. So it was embarrassing. I was lopsided. So I had to compensate for that. And it was horrible to say the least um i was bullied for it and i hated it now i knew at the age of nine that i was different from everyone else i knew that i was queer i just didn't have the term queer to fall back on i didn't know um who to talk to about it um my mom died when i was nine years old and she was like my superwoman she was my best friend so when she died um, the only person who I felt that I could talk to about how I was feeling was gone. Um, didn't want to talk to my stepdad about it. Didn't feel comfortable talking to him. Didn't feel comfortable talking to my older sisters because they were older. Um, so, of course, they had their own thing going on. I was nine years old. And um, when puberty hit, uh, it hit different. <laughs> Um, I've, I've never ever felt like I should have breasts. Um, and I was like, okay, so one came in, the other one didn't. Does that mean that this one's going to fall off? Or I know you're supposed to have two. Um, you know, then 10 months later, the other one came in. But because of that, um, growing up and becoming a young adult, when going to the doctors, they always thought that something was wrong. Um, so I would always have to have some kind of test because one was bigger than the other. So to them, it looked swollen. And um, one of the signs or symptoms of breast cancer is an enlarged breast. So that's where all the screenings came in. And then when the screening happened, they realized and diagnosed me with having fibrocystic breasts. Um, and that's just having basically lumpy breasts. Um, and these cysts, they come at will. They come in all shapes, all sizes, um, and they are painful. And I've had this since I was about 23. Uh, I had my first biopsy when I was 24. Um, had a few more after that. Um, all came back negative, thank God, but it's just a daunting feeling every year when I have to go have a mammogram and a sonogram. And, and since the age of 23, I have been having sonograms of these breasts because of the cysts. And they always had to monitor each and every one of them. If they saw a new one, they had to mark it. Um, they checked the old ones to see if they moved or to see if they got smaller or bigger. And it was just a lot. Um, so fast forward a month ago, 
I found another cyst in my left breast. My left breast had always been a problem. The left one, always the big problem. That's the one that came in first and it was always the problem. But I found another cyst and it was about that big. Um, I didn't even have to feel it because I could see it. Uh, so I contacted my doctor. I went to see my doctor and he told me, okay, so your annual is coming up. Um, and um, instead of having just the regular screening, I want you to have a diagnostic test. So I said, okay. Um, now, backtrack a bit. Um, since the age of 23, I've been having uh, ultrasounds on my chest, on, my, on the breasts. Um, and when I turned 40, it became a mammo and an ultrasound. So I have these two big tests every single year. And I hate them. I hate it. I hate it. I don't know who does like it, but I don't like it because I don't like these. They, they don't fit me. They, they were never mine. And they need to go. Um, so last week I was supposed to have my annual and they wanted me to come back this week, uh, which was today, um, so that I wouldn't have to do two different tests because they couldn't do, uh, a diagnostic last week. So I had both the screening and the diagnostic today. And when I woke up this morning, I just didn't feel right. Every year I get this one this way um and i hate it i absolutely hate it um they did the screening and they did the diagnostic and they told me to point to where the uh cyst was so i pointed to it and they looked at it and they said that something is behind it um that they cannot readily identify so i'm going to have to have another biopsy um i hate this i am so over these thank god i have um a surgical consult in two months um, um for my top surgery um i scheduled it in august which seemed like a lifetime ago um but now Two months from now, I'll be able to um, see the surgeon, to tell them what I want, um, to see the work that he's done. And, you know, just hopefully shortly after that, I'll be able to schedule and have my top surgery because that is what I've been wanting forever. Um, but, you know, of course, when... Um, you are asking for top surgery, you have to have your support letters. Thank God I got my two support letters weeks ago. Um, my social worker and my primary care physician, they were on it. And I feel bad because I know that there are a lot of people who are still waiting for their letters. Um, and there are a lot of people who are still waiting to have a consult. Um, I tried to get an earlier consult, earlier than February. And I was given the date of July of 2023. That is how long people have to wait. And when you are in a state like this and you feel disconnected from these things and you don't like them and you just wish they would go away, the last thing you want to do is wait two years just to have a consult about possibly having them removed. So I'm just grateful that in two months I can have my consult um, because the sooner these are gone, the better. Uh, I I'll be free. And um, I want that freedom. I want to be completely me. You know, um, as a non-binary trans person, I need to be fully me. Uh, I'm not transitioning into a trans man. I am not doing that because that would make me binary. I am non-binary. I am trans masculine, but I am not a trans man, if that makes sense. Um, I'll talk more about that in a later video, but I just want to be me. And these have to go in order for me to do that. So today was one of those days, but... Um, Hopefully, 
uh, it'll get better. I know it'll get better. Um, you know, part of my journey, I already know there are going to be ups and downs. That's anyone's journey when they're doing anything. There are going to be ups and downs. And all of my videos aren't going to be happy and me laughing. Um, you know, when I'm telling you about the changes that are happening to my body and um, taking you on the journey of me transitioning. It, it, it's not going to be that way all the time. Um, it's going to be days like this. Um, days when... I just, I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm helpless. Um, there's nothing I can do about these until it's time to have surgery. Um, and to all of my people in the trans community who has had surgery, I, I can't wait until I'm able to say that I'm I'm one of you um, who has had surgery. Um, to all of those who are trying to get surgery, whether it's waiting for your consult or trying to get your support letters, it's going to happen. Um, I know it's going to happen for me too. It's going to happen. We just have to wait a little longer um, and that sucks I know um, but I'm here um, I'm here to talk about any and everything and um, we can do this you know I never thought that at 50 years old that I would be transitioning um, and I love it because I finally feel I finally feel like me. I feel complete. Um, for a couple of decades, I was identifying as androgynous non-binary, and it never felt right. It never felt complete. There was a void there. And um, it wasn't until the pandemic that I was forced to look at myself, to figure out who I was and who I was trying to be. And it wasn't until I saw myself in two other people that I was able to say, oh my God, I am not androgynous non-binary. I am non-binary trans. And as soon as I said that, instantly, the last 41 years of my life made sense. It clicked for me. And I just felt free and I felt happy and I felt complete and that void was filled because I understood that this, this is who I am. I am a non-binary trans person. And um, once I realized that, I started moving. I started making the journey. I started finding out who I needed to talk to and, and, and where I needed to go. And I went to um, my new doctor now, uh, met her, and she listened. And she didn't try to project her ideas about me onto me. She listened to me and asked me what I wanted. And then she made it happen. And that is everything. Because a lot of doctors, they want you to do what they want you to do or what they think that you should be doing. And that just makes me very uncomfortable. But... My doctor, my social worker, they are there to hear you out and to help you get to the next step in your journey. So I went to my doctor one day and then the next doctor's visit, I had my first tee shot and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And I just felt so great. And I've been smiling ever since because it was like my new birth date. Um, and I've been taking tea ever since. I, I started taking tea every other week, but I started to notice some aggressive behavior um, that was not becoming, and it wasn't me. Um, so I went and I talked to my doctor because I told her I needed to tweak how I take 
my testosterone. So we just upped the frequency from every two weeks to every week. So this past Monday, I started every week or I, I started to uh, take testosterone every week. So, you know, it's, it's just... It's just the evolution. You have to do what works best for you. Um, I started off microdosing because I wanted to microdose, but it, it wasn't the best choice for me um, because my behavior was off and I didn't like it. So um, I changed it. Um, but I, I'm i happy. Um, today was challenging, but I'm still happy. Um, and it's going to get better. Um, once I have this biopsy and see what's what, um, it'll be a little better for me. I know until I have the biopsy, I may be up, I may be down. I, I don't know. Um, but I'll do more videos. Hopefully I won't be as melancholy as I am now. Um, I'm trying to be a bit upbeat. Um... But today was just, like, dysphoria is real. It's real. And um, I never got to talk about how much I hate these breasts. I hate them. I never, never liked them. I never wanted them. Um, I've been trying for years to have a double mastectomy. And, of course, they need a, a good medical reason and a diagnosis um, you know, and having fibrocystic breasts isn't uh, a sufficient diagnosis. Uh, so, um, I'm glad that I'm able to have top surgery. I'm so grateful. So, so grateful. And, um, it'll help me mentally. It will help me physically. And it will help me to connect to me, um, as... Who I am. I am becoming AJ. And um, on that road to becoming AJ, these have to go. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted to give everyone an update. Um, today was hard. Um, still thinking about it a bit. Um, the outcome wasn't what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting to hear that I had to have another biopsy um, based on what they saw or couldn't see clearly. Um, but it's going to be okay. For me, for all of us. Um, if there's anyone who is going through anything similar or just something like what I'm going through now. Um, keep your head up. That's all we can do. It will get better. Your time is coming. Um, I've noticed that a lot of people in my age group, um, I'll say from about 45 to 65, I actually found out that this past year, that age group has literally come out and come forth to have basically the same journey I'm having. Um, a lot of people have come out as non-binary. A lot of people have come out as trans. And a lot of people have uh, opted to have top surgery um, so they can be completely them. My doctor told me this, as a matter of fact. She actually said that there has been a 215% increase um, in gender affirming surgeries this year. And it was the age group 45 to 65, which I think is amazing. Um, because that means that people are becoming aware of and in tune with themselves and are comfortable enough to say, this is me. I need to live my life. Like, I can only imagine the type of wonderful life I could have had had I done this maybe two decades ago in my 30s or even my late 20s. 
you know, I never thought at 50 years old that I would be going through puberty again um, so that I could be who I always was. It's crazy, but I love it. I love it. So days like today, even though it's sad and I feel sad and melancholy, I can look up and know that even this is part of the process. Um, and I know that I will have my goal met and I will be me. So yeah, I am becoming AJ and I am inviting you on my journey. So I will be coming back with more videos and um, hopefully we'll be able to have some real conversations. I'm an open book. It doesn't matter. I'm too old to try to not talk about how I'm feeling. That's, that's so past. So I'm here. I'm always going to be here. So um, tune in and uh, let's talk. Thank you for listening. And I will see you next time.